Well, if you have your Bibles tonight, turn with me to Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Psalm 103. And we're going to be in the first five verses tonight. Psalm 103, and the first five verses, verses 1 through 5 tonight. I'll ask you if you found your place and you're willing and able, would you stand in reverence to the reading of the Word of God? The Bible says this in Psalm 103, verse 1, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this service tonight, an opportunity to come here and to worship you because you alone are worthy to be worshipped. We thank you for the songs that have been sung. We thank you for the sweet time of prayer around this altar tonight. And we say thank you tonight for your pure, holy, infallible word. Fathers, we look to this text. I pray um, that you'd cleanse and empty me of self and sin. Father, I cannot preach in and of myself. I stand where my flesh will fail me. So, Father, I pray that you'd preach tonight. And if you choose to use me as a vessel, Father, I pray that you'd use me uh, for your glory and for your honor and for that alone. And we'll give you all praise, honor, and glory for everything that's said and done. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray and all God's people say it. Amen. Thank you so much for standing. You may be seated. As you can read in your Bible tonight, we see that Psalm 103 is a psalm of David. Uh, John Phillips wrote in his commentaries that this psalm would have been David's hallelujah chorus. Um, in this psalm, is, and this is where we're going to camp out over the next couple weeks, I, I enjoyed reading verses 1 through 5, and as I began to read through the entire psalm, I said, this is too good just to preach five verses and go on. Uh, we're going to camp out here for the next couple weeks. Uh, what you'll find as you look in this psalm through the next couple weeks, you'll see the past, the present, and the future when it comes to God. You'll see how good he's been in the past. You'll see how good uh, he is being in the present. You'll see how good he's going to be in the future. And I just want to encourage you with this tonight. When it comes to God and his word, they are applicable to the past, the present, and the future. Brother Lloyd Howard told me when I was going to be leaving Midway to come over here to be your pastor, he told me, he said, Son, if I can tell you anything as you go to that place, he said, Preach the book. Preach the book. He said, That book is the only book that is applicable to the past, the present, and the future. There is nothing else like it, so I encourage you, don't preach your opinion, don't preach popularity. Preach the book to those people and let it land where it lands and let God deal with hearts as only he can. Just preach the book, son, as you go forward in your ministry. And that is what we find when you look at God. I'm glad he doesn't change, aren't you? I'm glad his word does not change. I'm glad his attributes do not change. So I've got good news for you tonight, friend. If he was all love in the past and he's love today, he's going to be love in the future. Hey, if he's compassion in the past and he's compassion today, he's going to be compassionate in the future. I can keep on going tonight with those things, but I pray that you get the picture. Our God and His Word does not change. They are constant and they are applicable in the past, the present, and the future. I like how the psalmist begins in verses 1 and 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. 
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He's saying, bless the Lord. I want to say tonight, that's what we should have come to this place to do tonight. We should not have come to this place tonight just to check off a box and say that we went to Wednesday night prayer meeting. We should not have come to this place tonight to make sure that we don't have so-and-so talking about how we weren't there in the parking lot. I pray you didn't come here tonight to make your mama or daddy happy or your grandma or grandpa happy or the preacher happy. I'm glad you're here. But friend, if we came here for any other reason than to lift up our voice and to lift up our hands and say bless his holy name we came for the wrong reason tonight the psalmist he's got it right he said bless the Lord oh my soul now that tag oh my soul is very important we're going to get to that here in just a little bit but oh my soul all that is within me bless his holy name Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Now, I want to say tonight, Baptist people can be some of the most forgetful people when it comes to the benefits of God. Now, they don't forget when somebody done them wrong. And they don't forget what kind of drama was back 30 years ago. And they don't forget family history. And they sure don't forget that great-grandpa, twice removed, was a founding member of the church and the cemetery's mine. You can find that all across America. They don't forget stuff like that. But here's what they will forget. They will forget how good God's been to them. They will forget who God is and how He has worked in their life. And here's what we're going to find as we look at verses 3 through 5. Baptists are very, very keen to forget that God has done something for them that nobody else could do. That He has done something for us that nobody else or nothing else can do. The psalmist is going to write verses 3 through 5 and he's going to write what God has done and only God can do it. Now I want you to notice that in my Bible there is a colon behind benefits. I want to even say this tonight. Even the punctuation in your Bible is not there by accident. Meaning this, after a colon means you normally put a list. A list of things. Forget not all his benefits. And he's going to begin with some who's. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. I just want to encourage you with this tonight. When it comes to forgiving all your iniquities, only God can do that. You can have aught with your brother or sister in Christ. <laughs> hey, and you can ask for forgiveness. <laughs> hey, and they can say, yes, I forgive you. But I can tell you this. They can't go and forgive you of all your sins from that point forward all the way back to the day you was born. They can't do it. Only God can do that. I'm glad that the day that I got saved, uh, hey, <laughs> he washed me clean of everything I had ever done. I'm talking the things I did before I could even talk or crawl. He washed me clean. He forgiveth all thine iniquities. Some of y'all tonight ought to be thankful for that word all. Because before you came to know Jesus, the people sitting on the pew with you might slide down a little bit. <laughs> because if God only forgave some or most, that meant some of them would still be accounted for in your life. Oh, but the day that old time Holy Ghost conviction came upon your life and you bowed your unworthy head. Hey, you went down a beggar, but you came up a millionaire. You went down lost, but you came up found. Hey, you went down a sinner and came up a sinner saved by grace. God washed you clean of every single iniquity, every bad thought, every bad word, every bad action. He washed you clean and said it's forgiven. Whew. What a blessing that is to be forgiven of all. I encourage you tonight, look in the mirror. 
You know, something else is bad about Baptist churches. They like to point out other people's problems. They put themselves on an Olympic pedestal and they say, well, I'm not at the top, but I'm in the middle, but there's people below me. They've got more faults than I've got. They've got more problems than I got. Can I encourage you tonight? Get a mirror. Get a mirror and leave it there. The psalmist wrote, Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. I want you to make it personal tonight because that's what you got. You got a personal relationship with him. Hey, when I got saved, it didn't matter who all was around me. It didn't matter who all else was present and accounted for that day. When you got saved, it didn't matter who else was in the altar that day. It did not matter who was in the congregation. Friend, I'm just going to remind you tonight, salvation's a one-on-one -on -one thing that's between you and God and by the way this ought to tear you up from the floor up I might not get through all this tonight but that's okay God knew who you were he saw all your iniquities and he said I'm going to forgive you anyway you see it's easy when we can hide stuff and sweep it under the rug <laughs> and say well we're not I'm not as bad as you think because you don't know everything about me God sees it all he sees all that mess and he says, I love you anyway. He said, I'm going to forgive you anyway. I gave my best just for you knowing the mess that you're in. Hey, there's nothing hidden from him. He knows it all. And he loves you anyway and forgives you anyway. What a blessing tonight. Moving on. Not only... Does he forgive all thine iniquities? Who healeth all thy diseases? He's our healer. I want you to turn over to Psalm 147 and verse 3. Psalm 147 and verse 3. Read this to you tonight. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. That's the God that we serve. He is a healer now I want to I want to hit on this tonight that's why I told you you got to you got to look back at that tag of oh my soul it starts with the spiritual when it comes to healing the psalmist did not write under inspiration bless the Lord oh my soul oh my body he didn't write bless the Lord oh my body he wrote, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Meaning this, it starts with the eternal. <laughs> and it'll move on to the physical. I want to encourage you with this tonight, friend. For your lost loved ones that need to work in their life, and they may be in chains of addiction, and they may have different things going on in their life, listen to me, it starts with salvation. It starts with a personal relationship with Christ, and it goes on from there. God works from the inside out. Can I say it like this tonight? You may die from a brain tumor, but a brain tumor ain't going to send you to hell. Don't get caught in on the physical. Not having a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is how you're going to bust hell wide open when you die. The only way you're going to go to heaven is by a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Doesn't matter how you go. Cancer, automobile accident, you can go on down the list. It's all about the spiritual first. The psalmist is in, he's in on that. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, who healeth all thy diseases like I said God works from the inside out you say preacher you got proof of that absolutely I, I got a common day practice proof right here for you you watch an alcoholic come down here and give his life to Christ by the way those are my kind of people I, I'll go to church with them all day long somebody say amen that's all right if you don't want to go to church with them go somewhere else because we're going to welcome them in here I'll just smile at you. They come down here and they give their life 
to Jesus. But they get up, okay? Now, they went down a beggar and come up a millionaire. They went down lost and they come up found. Why, now they have a new relationship with Christ. Now their soul is healed. But they still 50 beers in their refrigerator at home. The physical hadn't changed yet. They're still in the same clothes that they went down in. <laughs> hadn't changed. The addict that comes down here and gives their life to Christ, they get up and they're born again, walking in newness of life, but they still got their drug dealer's phone number and their cell phone as they walk back to the pew. That has not changed. But what has changed is the inside. Now they say, I used to like Bud Light, but now I got a taste for something a whole lot better. I want some more of that living water that's now bubbling out of my soul. While the addict comes down here and they may walk back to the pew with the drug dealer's number right there in their cell phone, but they're going to say, you know what? I'm as high as I've ever been in my life right now, and I pray I never come down. I don't need that stuff anymore. I got something better that I've got hooked up with. I want to encourage you to this tonight, church. When you go and you pray over people and you ask prayer, I check up how they are with God before I worry about the physical. Brother Terry, I love you, Daddy. And I pray that his knees get to feeling better. But if he's still got to use that motorized cart and that cane to get around, that's all right with me as long as he gets born again. That's all right with me as long as he gets born again. The physical comes later. Now, listen, I, I'm not one of these sugarcoat good news preachers. I'm not going to tell you that the moment that you get saved, that all your problems are just going to vanish away. <laughs> And everything's going to be all right in your life. And you're never going to have another problem. And you're never going to have another trouble. You're never going to have another heartache. You're never going to have another ache or pain. I'd be lying to you. But I can tell you this. When the spiritual gets hooked up with God, you don't go through them by yourself. See, before you had a relationship with Jesus, you went through them by yourself. You went through marriage problems by yourself. You went through storms by yourself. Hey, you went through family matters by yourself. But now there's somebody with you, and he's promised to never leave thee nor forsake thee. So even though you may be going through the storm, you can lift up your hands and say, Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Woo! All that is within me, praise his holy name. He's a healer. I want to encourage you with this tonight, too, before I move on. Man, i got to hurry. <laughs> Sometimes there's that eternal healing. You say, preacher, I prayed for my grandma or grandpa or my aunt or uncle or my child or for all these things to get better, and they died. They died. Can I tell you what else the psalmist wrote? It may not make any sense to you right now, but it will one day. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. You say, preacher, how was it precious? Remember, you've got to be a saint. <laughs> got to have it right spiritually. But if your grandma or grandpa knew Jesus, guess what? It ain't goodbye, it's just I'll see you later. They're not hurting anymore. <laughs> They're not struggling anymore. Everything is all right. You say, <laughs> Preacher, I lost a child. <laughs> that little, I never even got to hold him alive. I'm here to tell you this. you got all eternity to hold that little baby. Everything's going to be all right. Don't you worry about it. God's got it all taken care of. I know you hurt. I know you sorrow. But as Paul wrote, we sorrow not as those that have no hope. We have a hope tonight. And his name is Jesus. Not all healing comes from chemotherapy, radiation, and a pill bottle. Sometimes God says, you know what? I'm just going to take them home. And they ain't going to have to worry about this no more. So I want to encourage you with that tonight. He is a healer in all aspects. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Can we camp out here for just a minute? <laughs> Redeemer, meaning this, 
a kinsman redeemer. Some of you think, oh, he's going to Ruth tonight. No, I'm going to Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59, 20. Isaiah 59, 20. Go ahead and flip with me. Brother Chad tried to get me to preach out of Ruth tonight. He tried, but we'll get there on Sunday night. Isaiah 59, 20. What does it say? And the Redeemer shall come to Zion. And unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob saith the Lord. There's a note in my Bible that when you see Redeemer in this type, it's a kinsman Redeemer. It is the same word, G-O-E-L, that we find in the passage that we're in tonight. You know what they say? That is a beautiful type of Christ. Redeemer. Can I ask you tonight? Who can redeem but Him? Who can redeem but Him? Is there salvation found in any other place? Absolutely not. You can't make enough money. You can't give to enough charitable organizations. You can't be a good enough person to get your way to heaven. You have to be redeemed. How many of y'all remember when I did action verbs with the letter R about redeeming? You remember the story I told at the end of that sermon? I'll tell it again. This will help some of y'all tonight because this was you. There was a preacher. I, I ain't even going to preach all this tonight. There was a preacher. He was out on visitation. He pulled up at a house. He got out of his truck, and there was this dog. And this dog started running around his truck just as happy as you've ever seen. I mean, that dog just running around like crazy. His tongue was just hanging out. He was so happy. That preacher's kind of scared to get out of the truck. Father looked at him. Him and his son was out in the yard. He said, oh, don't mind that dog. He said, he's all right. He ain't nothing but a mutt. So the preacher got out, and he got up on the front porch of the house, and he said, what's going on with that dog? Father said, let me tell you what happened. He said, we was having a se our septic tank pump. He said, guy pulled up with one of those companies in a brand new truck, brand new truck. He said, pump went out on that thing right when he got started. He said, so he told us, said, listen, I'm going to leave the lid off that septic tank. And he said, I'm going to go get another truck with a good pump on it. He said, y'all be careful going over the crest of that hill. He said, that old dog said, he loves squirrels. He said, and they was one took off a run right there through the yard. He said, and there he went. And we started hollering, whoop, whoop, no, nope, no, nope, come back, no. Nope. He said, you saw that dog. He said, as he crested over that hill chasing that squirrel and said, all of a sudden, you saw the lid off to the side and there was that open septic tank. He said, he started backpedaling in midair. And he said, you heard a kaploosh. Father said, me and my son said, we got over there. Said, we looked down. Said, there was that dog down there just paddling all that filth, all that nastiness. The father looked at the son and said, now, son, if you love him, you're going to have to go down there and get him. He said, but he ain't worth nothing. He's just a mud. Don't even come with papers. He ain't worth nothing. That son says, well, I love him, so I'm going to go get him. So go grab a ladder. And he puts it down there in that field, that nastiness, that septic tank. That son got down there in that septic tank going through all that sewage. Said that old dog said he was panicking so much that he was even pushing the son away. Said he was just panicking. You know what some of y'all did for a long time? You kept pushing him away. Kept pushing him away while you were swimming in your field. <laughs> But finally, that old dog, he gave in. And that son picked him up. And he brought him up out of that field. Put him over there on the side. Father said he went and got a water hose. Started spraying that dog off. Cleaning him up. All that nastiness. He said, and ever since that day, Brother Dennis, he said, that's all that dog's done. 
that he's just running around as happy as he can be, fellowshipping with me and the Father. <laughs> that daddy turned and he looked, and that preacher was sitting over there just crying, crocodile tears coming down his cheek. He said, what you crying for, preacher? He said, that was me many years ago. He said, I was down in the filth of life. I was trying to swim and keep my head above. He said, then the beloved Son of God came to where I was, and he got down in my filth, and he wrapped me up, and he pulled me out, and he cleaned me up. That's redeemed. That's redeemed. From what? From destruction. Do you know this? You couldn't get your way out of hell. There was nothing you could do in yourself that could avoid it. But God. But God came by your way and let you know you needed a Savior. And today, by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you're heaven bound with the hammer down. <laughs> Hey, what a blessing. Redeem, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy, crowns you. Now listen, I'm not saying I'm a scholar, but I am saying this. When you put on a crown, you put it on your head. Crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. I'm just going to let y'all know this. I don't deserve to be crowned with anything good. I don't deserve it. Anything good that you see in my life is all Jesus. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> There's nothing good about me. But he crowns me <laughs> with love and kindness and tender mercies. And I got, a great, I got great news for you tonight, friend, before I move on. He ain't running out. He's got an abundant supply. That's who he is tonight. Who satisfies thy mouth with good things. Satisfied. You ever ask somebody, are you satisfied with that? What does that mean? Does that meet the mark? Is that how you want it? Can I encourage you with this tonight, friend? I know this is Wednesday night crowd. I know this. But don't you turn to anything of the world for satisfaction. You'll, you'll sit there with your tongue hanging out. You won't have a bit. It'll be temporary. Everything in this world is temporary. I'd get hooked up with something that's eternal. <laughs> he satisfies my mouth with good things. Thy mouth with good things. Can I say this? His things are the best. The best. Because when it comes from God, it doesn't get any better. <laughs> he is the best. And that's what He bestows upon us. He satisfies our mouths with good things. How many of you can raise your hand tonight and say, I've been blessed. I have been blessed. God has been so, so good to me. And he just keeps satisfying and pouring it out and pouring it out. We don't deserve a bit of it. Not a bit. But he just keeps satisfying. He is the one who satisfies. You won't find satisfaction in anywhere else. Only he can satisfy. We're, gonna, we're actually going to get done. I'm going to try to hurry. <laughs> he says, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Feel like turning back over to Isaiah? Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Let's see what the Bible says. Isaiah chapter 40, verse, 30, verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Many commentators, when they look at this passage, they believe that David would have been older in age. He would not have been a young man. He would have been older in his age when, when he wrote this down. But he says, so that thy youth is renewed. Renewed. 
This is simple tonight, but it'll help you. You can't be renewed unless you were once new. Some of y'all, I'm going to say it again, just so some of y'all can chew on that as you go home. You can't be renewed unless you've been new before. <laughs> what a blessing that is. I can remember. Any, so some of y'all are still around my age. Anybody remember Video World in Columbus? Yeah, all right, yeah. Three of you. Yeah. All right. This, now, for the teenagers in here, y'all may not know what this is. This is a, we used to go get the VCR tapes to watch movies. And you talk about a day ruiner. When you got one that they didn't rewind before they brought it back, that was a day ruiner. <laughs> that just wasn't a good day. You wanted to have the one where it was like high powered and that thing could rewind really quick. They used to do, some of y'all remember this, you used to be able to rent five movies for five days. What a blessing that was. <laughs> as, as if we didn't need to be a couch potato. But for me as a kid who loved pro wrestling, that meant I could go get the pay-per-views that mom and daddy said, I ain't paying 60 bucks for that. I'll wait till it comes out. And then you can go up to video world and you can get it and then you can watch it. And Brother Terry, I already knew what happened. I've been watching Monday Night Raw and Monday Nitro. I already knew what happened, but I wanted to watch it anyway. I want to see what happened. So I'd go get five of those wrestling pay-per-views, and, man, I'd make a fort with blankets and stuff, and I'd just camp out. I mean, I had it. had it going on. But there were times where you might have got through four. You couldn't get through the five in five days. You'd take them up there to the counter. You'd say, I want to renew these. You get to take it right back home with you. And you'd start with the one that you missed. And watch the other four again. Renew. Renew. Some of y'all, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna help you tonight. Don't let your age define you. Don't let your age define you. You say, I'm not a spring chicken anymore. You're not, but God's not through with you. He can renew you, and you may have the knees and the ankles and the back of a 60-year-old, but you'll have the joy of the salvation that you on the day you got. And you'll say, you know what? I'm ready to do something for Jesus. I'm ready to go. I am renewed, and I am ready to go. What did he write in verse 2? Forget not all his benefits. And he lists them out right there. I'm going to close with this question tonight. Do you echo the psalmist? Do you echo the psalmist? Do you echo tonight that God has done something for you that you could not do for yourself? Do you echo tonight that God has done something for you that this world could not? I pray that's your testimony tonight. If it's not, I got great news for you. There, there's no coincidence that these were in the order that they're in. He starts with forgiveness. <laughs> and then he moves forward. <laughs> I want to let you know tonight, if you have, don't have a relationship with Jesus and you're sitting in this place, the devil's telling you that there's no way you can be forgiven. On the authority of the Word of God in Psalm 103, verse 3, I tell you tonight, you can be forgiven. <laughs> The devil's going to tell you there's no way, there's no way you can be healed of all the mental damage and different things that have come to your life. The devil's telling you there's no way you can be healed of that. On the authority of the Word of God, I tell you tonight, it starts with being forgiven and it starts with your soul. You can be healed tonight. You can be healed. I'm not telling you you're not going to carry some scars. But I can tell you this, healing will start in your life. You say, preacher, is it going to come right away? No, it comes in his timing. No, that's, that's when it comes. It doesn't, it doesn't come on our Google calendar. I can go all throughout that, those verses to help you tonight. But that's the God that we serve. That's the God that we serve. And I pray that you leave this place tonight saying, I echo the psalmist. Huh. 
He has done something for me that nobody else could do. And I say, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, with all that was in, is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. I will not forget all his benefits. I pray you leave here tonight renewed, <laughs> knowing you're redeemed, and a little bit revived. A little kick in your step as you leave this place tonight. We want to do something special before we close tonight. Miss Tiffany, you come on up here. Honey. What a blessing this is. Now again, I tell you, these are my kind of people. Okay? So if they're not your kind of people, go somewhere else. But these are the kind of people I want coming here. Because the only hope and the only only way that they're going to find help is in the Lord Jesus Christ. She's been coming, and we have loved seeing her here. And she's about to go. You're going to be going to Bethel. How long are you going to be there? Uh, okay. All right. So she's going to Bethel Rehab to get some help. And what she wanted, she wanted us to pray over her tonight before she goes. I couldn't think of a better way to close out the service tonight than to pray over her and to ask God to do a work in her life and to heal her <laughs> hey, and to re redeem, renew, revive whatever needs to be done in her life. So if you're willing and able, would you come? Let's gather around her tonight. We're going to close out this way. It's how we're going to close. We're going to pray. Absolutely. We're going to pray for Tiffany. We're going to pray uh, for Brian and Judy too and uh, lift them up tonight. So I'm going to lead us in prayer, but y'all pray along with me, all right? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this worship service that we've had in this place. And Father, we, we thank you for this moment that we get to bow before you once again. And, and we come before you um, on behalf of Tiffany. What a, what a blessing she is. I, I'm so thankful when I hear somebody say, I need help. Thank you for getting her to that point where she'll admit it. I need help. And God, I'm thankful that she came to the right place. <laughs> and God, we, we pray tonight for her as she's going to this faith-based facility that is going to help her um, with this addiction. God, we pray tonight that whatever needs to happen in her life, we pray it would happen. We pray that you would work mightily in her life. We, we know you are the healer tonight. We, we know that you can touch her and you can rid her of these desires. And Father, I pray for her life that when she is at this facility and as she leaves this facility in the time allotted that she's there, that she will leave with a hunger and a thirst for you and you alone. And that nothing of this world will satisfy anything in her life only you will satisfy. And so, Father, we pray that over her life tonight. We pray for Brian and Judy, uh, precious people, um, loving on her tonight. And we're going to continue to pray for them and pray for her as she's away. And we're going to go ahead and thank you in advance for what you're going to do in her life. And so, Father, we pray blessings to her as she's going to this facility. Again, we thank you for her. Thank you for her willingness to come and to be in this place and to admit that she needs to find help. And I'm thankful for a good mom and daddy that said this is where you need to go. This is where you need to find help. It can only be found in Jesus. And Father, we pray for all those that are battling addictions. I know, I know there are other people in this circle tonight that have loved ones that are in the chains of addiction. And I pray that we'd get a burden for them. I pray that we'd say, you can come sit on the church pew with me. I pray that they'd say Jesus is the only answer. And we got a place where you can come and you can hear about Jesus. So, Father, we just, we just pray for that tonight. Would you go with us? Uh, we thank you for a, a, just a wonderful evening in your house. We leave this place saying it was good to be in the house of the Lord. Lead God and direct us, protect us. And if you give Sunday to us, we look forward to coming back to your house once again to worship you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. You are at liberty tonight. Hug somebody's neck. Tell them you love them uh, before you get out of this place.